Before we start, the following video comes from my upcoming online self-study course on how to do qualitative interviews, in which I share all my knowledge about this method. So I talk about different classifications of interviews and also what it takes to be a good interviewer. Then I discuss different advantages of interviews before moving on to the practical part in which I discuss uh, how to develop a good interview guide, an interview guide that will help you effectively elicit responses. So I talk about different types of questions to ask as well as, as well as types of questions to avoid in an interview. I discuss issues such as how to develop good report, how to start and how to end the interview. Then I talk about, uh, briefly talk about uh, analyzing interview data and I also discuss the issue of reliability and validity of interview data. And then I move on to what is in my opinion the most interesting and more, most distinctive part of this course uh, which is about interviewing different vulnerable groups and also discussing different sensitive topics during the interview. So I talk, uh, of course, as I do in the following video, I talk about interviewing children, but I also talk about interviewing people with brain injuries. I talk about interviewing people who survive some kind of a, a trauma, traumatic event or abuse. Uh, and several other groups. I'm releasing the course around April 15th this year, so if it's past that date, you can definitely find the link to the full course in the description. And now enjoy the video. Interviewing children is an extremely demanding and complex and difficult task. And in fact, many have uh, argued that only trained professionals should be doing that. And others uh, agree that uh, it's not necessarily the case. But uh, what uh, all of them have in common is that uh, definitely everybody agrees that you need to have plenty of knowledge and skills uh, to interview children. So in this video I want to focus on very specific techniques for what to do and not to do when you are interviewing a child. Uh, but prior to that I want you to understand that uh, before you get to that stage, to the actual interview, there is a range of complex procedures that you need to undertake. And here of course I mean uh, the ethical approval uh, procedure. So when you are applying for ethical approval for uh, before uh, you conduct a study involving children, of course the whole process is much more complex than uh, in, in the case of any other ethical approval. And the most important point is to demonstrate that you have a very good understanding of what this kind of research involves, that is very well planned uh, and there is absolutely no chance that any kind of emotional or physical harm uh, will be experienced by your uh, child participants. I will not be discussing uh, the details of this uh, kind of ethical application or ethical uh, guidelines because they will differ. Uh, even the definition of uh, who uh, a child or a young person is will differ uh, between different countries. So you definitely have to make sure that you have a very good understanding of that first. And uh, the ethical guidelines again will be different Although there are some uh, generally accepted, generally expected things, uh, such as, uh, as I said again, that of course no harm comes to uh, your child participants. Usually uh, the parents or guardians are expected to be there. And more often than not, the interview will be taking place in the child's home so that he or she feels more comfortable. So now I want to discuss uh, the actual techniques, the actual way of conducting interviews with children. Before I start uh, discussing these uh, three sets of advice that I want to share, uh, I also want to uh, make it clear that the interview with a child will be quite different to an interview with a, an adult person in terms of the research design as well, so the interview design. Uh, more often than not, uh, these interviews uh, use a variety of techniques and methods, so they are not just uh, verbal uh, communication, but they involved uh, things such as drawing and discussing pictures and photos and maybe writing, writing a diary, sometimes using toys and sometimes playing. So there's plenty of different things that have been done. Uh, in Scotland there's been research where uh, children were asked to uh, put answers, responses to sensitive questions into a box. Uh, I think it was called mystery box. So uh, like I said, researchers uh, get really really creative when they try to elicit information from children. But now I want to share uh, three sets of advice for interviewing children. And I uh, so I divided this advice into uh, the general uh, first contact as well as establishing rules 
uh, and uh, eliciting information, so gathering the data. So regarding the first contact, of course you want to be very friendly and, and this is something uh, I can't stress enough in, uh, in a case of any interviews, but especially interviewing children. You want to greet them by the first name, that's very important as well. So again, you generally want to come across as a friendly person. You want to explain, again as in any other interview, but then uh, with a child it's even more important, uh, what you are doing here, you know, what's what's going to happen. You want to tell them where their parents are if they are not uh, present. You want to uh, tell them about this whole situation, what's going to happen and and the role of, of you and the child and perhaps some other people that are involved. And then you want to start, of course, uh, asking them questions. Uh, but ideally, you want to start with talking, uh, asking them general questions about their interests or maybe where they go to school. Uh, you really want the child to open up. Uh, again, in theory, it will not be uh, much different to any other interview situation where, of course, you want to break the ice somehow as well. But in practice, of course, you'll agree that with a child it will be completely different. You have to be extremely sensitive, so super sensitive and more sensitive than with an adult participant, sensitive to how you ask questions, so uh, take, an, uh, take the advantage of the fact that you are an adult and you are the researcher and you know something about them. So like I said, uh, uh, be using their first name. Uh, also when you talk about their relatives, ideally talk about, you know, Uncle Michael, not just about him. Uh, also when you, uh, when you talk about uh, for example, their friends, if, if you're uh, interviewing a child that's being bullied at school and doesn't have any friends, of course you won't be asking them about their best friends. So just a matter of being sensitive and also using your knowledge of the child and the child's context and environment uh, to, build, to build that extra uh, connection and just try to avoid asking a question that will uh, result in the child just shutting down completely and also be very sensitive to their needs so whether they want to go to the toilet or maybe they want to have a low break or maybe want to drink uh, again th remember this is a child perhaps to some of us who are parents it's a little bit easier to understand that uh, remember that children are not always so direct in explaining their needs uh, but if you don't chil uh, have children remember that it's so much different talking to a child. In terms of collecting the actual data, so again, you want to ask, uh, as I said in one of the previous videos in this course, you want to ask uh, questions that are open questions, encouraging the child to, uh, to start from the beginning. So say, you know, can you tell me about, so open questions that encourage them to share uh, the whole story. You also want to start with uh, more general questions and then progress to more specific questions uh, or uh, progress to more demanding questions or the questions that ask about the actual or quite often negative experience that you want to ask about. Now if you're investigating uh, the topic of abuse for example quite often it helps to ask the child to use dolls and toys to show what happened rather than uh, tell you exactly what happened. And this is not only because they may feel more comfortable doing so, but also because they uh, quite often, often they don't fully understand what happened, so they can't really explain it. Also remember to use a lot of prompts, such as uh, can you tell me what happened next, uh, and uh, generally be also very sensitive to how they describe things. If they cover their mouth or they start, uh, start whispering or uh, they just speak very uh, quietly, uh, ideally you want to allow them to do it, so you don't want to interrupt and say can you please speak louder. So remember this may be a very sensitive, a very uh, difficult and hard uh, experience for the child to describe, especially to a person they don't know. And finally, throughout the interview ideally you want to uh, sit uh, in such a way that uh, enables you to have eye level contact. You don't want to be looking down on the child during the interview. In terms of establishing rules, uh, you want to, uh, early in the interview, you want to establish uh, basic rules uh, because, again, because this is a child. So you want to make sure that they understand the concepts of a lie and, and a true story. You want to emphasize that you want to focus on the truth today. Uh, you may uh, talk about secrets and concepts of sharing secrets. So uh, you may also talk about guessing uh, whether, you know, 
uh, the difference between guessing something and knowing something and again uh, just tell them that you want to be sure whether uh, they tell you something because they know it or they tell you something because uh, this is their guess so uh, it's, it's definitely not something you would uh, need to do if you are interviewing adult people but this is something you have to do when you're interviewing children